Speaker Freak, what's up, buddy? What's up, yo? That's again. Good evening. Good evening to y'all. Friday night in the workshop. Ah, that's my life. <laughs> Lots of people are waiting for this. Hi from Finland. Ah, what's going on? I love Finland. Okay, right. Let's get let's get this let's get this video started. So, to detect clipping, there is not a lot of options uh, for some piece of equipment. Generally, people just go for the DD SMD DD1, and uh, I think this this is quite an expensive piece of equipment just to tell you what point on your dial the thing is going into a square wave. Now, the method that I'm going to show you is quite a well-known method among people that are electrically knowledgeable or electricians or like technicians um, and things like that. This, this, this is a really stupidly simple thing that you can do um, that, that, that some of you will probably know already anyway um, but there are a lot of people who maybe it hadn't crossed their mind that you could do this so I wanted to show it to you. Now if you think about so when when your amplifier clips it creates a square, it starts to square off the top and bottom of the wave. So before clipping, the sine wave is beautifully smooth and the only frequency that's emitted from the amplifier whilst the amplifier is playing clean and not clipping is the low frequency which you're playing. No other frequencies are emitted from the amplifier, okay? However, when you go into clip, when the wave starts getting squared off at the top and the bottom, due to the sharp edges of the square wave, of, of the squaring off of the sine wave, you actually end up with a kind of high frequency buzz that rides along the sine wave which is what sounds like distortion that's what you can hear when you hear a square wave the, the kind of sharp buzziness that you get with a square wave is the fact that there is another frequency which is riding along the sine wave to cause that that kind of buzz and that frequency that you hear the buzzy kind of sound is actually quite a high frequency so Let's now think about how a tweeter works. You have a tweeter with a crossover, a capacitor in series with the tweeter. And what that does is it filters out all the low frequency to just allow you to hear the high frequency. So think about it this way. If your subwoofer amplifier is designed to only emit low frequencies, but when it clips it emits high frequencies, then the simple answer is to hook up a small speaker with a tweeter capacitor in series with your bass amp, and then you will hear the distortion sound quite loudly from your tweeter or your small speaker when the amplifier clips but you won't get any of the bass so your subwoofers will still be doing 150 flipping dbs at 30 hertz and your small speaker in your hand that has the capacitor in series won't move an inch and then when the amplifier clips it'll buzz let me show you a demonstration of that happening so here we have on the bench an SPL Dynamics uh, ICE 1500D, this is a really flipping common amplifier. This is your real uh, basic sort of 1500 watt uh, cheap, it's a ch I think it's a Chinese build um, amplifier. These boards are very common and they're in many, many brands. I don't know all your American brands, but there's fucking lo loads of brands that use this board in the UK. So, 100, you know, 1500 watts, that's a, that's a fair that's a fair amount of power for a daily system. You know, your daily system, maybe you're keeping on stock electrical or you, you know, got one extra battery or you've done a little bit of extra cabling. It's not gonna demand a huge amount of your system. So th this is a good amount of power for the general everybody. You know, a few, quite a lot, you know, out of everyone, the average power is probably gonna be somewhere around 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 watts RMS. So we take our standard amplifier and we play, I'm gonna play a 33, roughly 33.6 or but I'm going to play 33 Hertz tone through this okay and we'll see the tone on the oscilloscope so you can see that the amplifier is playing clean and when it starts to clip I have this really small speaker everybody has spare speakers laying around everyone has spare shit laying around like this fucking little tweeter little spare old speaker component speaker six inch thing anything and then all I've done is I've put a capacitor in series with the tweeter, uh, the speaker, sorry, to filter out the low frequencies so that um, only the high frequencies are passed to this speaker. So when the amplifier clips, we will hear distortion through this speaker, but nothing else. 
Um, now, the capacitor that you need is very specific, and I'll go over that in a moment. But let me just show you the demonstration. So let me turn the amplifier on. Amplifier comes on with a blue light, we can see here on my hand. Okay, a little bit of high frequency from the uh, coil switching. So as we can see on the scope here, we have a sine wave there. And now, if I turn this up, we can see the sine wave. So this is the amplifier playing beautifully clean. And there is absolutely nothing coming out of this speaker. This speaker is, is doing absolutely nothing at all. It's just sitting there like, la la la, not doing anything. But I, I actually have a load connected uh, to this amplifier. And this is, this is giving 17 volts. You see? So there's no sound coming through the speaker while the amplifier is playing clean. But as soon as we hit clip point, suddenly the tweeter starts making a noise. So this is your clip point. So you can hook this up to your amplifier and you can listen to this small speaker. You can have it on a really long wire from the back or you can hook it up to, you know, to your sub amps. And when the speaker starts making a noise, it starts, you start hearing like from the speaker. That is when your amplifier is reaching the rail voltages in the amplifier and it's starting to square off. So then you need to back off the gains and just attach and then you'll be playing clean. So let's show you that on the big screen. So this is perfectly clean. Again, nothing coming through the speaker. As soon as we reach that clip point, you can see it here, bigger, on the bigger screen. As soon as we reach that clip point, we start getting the distortion coming through. Now, this is just a very, very basic demonstration. There are, you know, much better upgrades you could make for this. You could even connect headphones to the amplifier through a resistor network and a capacitor network so that you can have some small headphones that you just plug into your amplifier that you can hear the, the distortion through. Um, now, this doesn't, this works perfectly fine regardless of whether you're running a 500 watt amplifier or a 10,000 watt amplifier. The only thing that you need to make sure is that your capacitor is a high enough voltage rating. So for a capacitor, obviously, the, so the capacitor I'm using here just for this small test, because it's, it's the one that I had laying around, is a 100 volt, 3.3 microfarad. So obviously, if you have a much more powerful amplifier, let's say you have a 10,000 watt amplifier, that thing can output, um, the, 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 the sine wave will swing between like pretty much almost 200, uh, 200 volts. So you want to try and find a capacitor that is maybe a 400 volt non-polarized capacitor and around about 2.2 or 3.3 microfarads. And then you can hook it up to your small speaker. The small speaker won't do it. Is that for class D only? No, this works for class AB, class D, class T for tripath, class GH. This works for any class of amplifier. You can use resistors also. Yeah, you can use resistors also. The only problem with using resistors is you are still going to get the low frequency come through whatever speaker you attach. And then, therefore, because you're using resistors, the distortion sound is much quieter. Whereas using a capacitor, the distortion sound um, stays at the same volume as it would be without being lowered in volume like a resistor would do. But, because it lets through the high frequencies, but it just uh, filters all the low frequencies. I'm sorry if the stream keeps buffering my uh, OBS software. Why? Uh, okay, what else we got going on in the live chat? This only works for class D and 33 hertz. No, this works for any class of amplifier and any frequency. So you can use you can use any frequency you like, and the capacitor, as long as the capacitor is, is of a low enough uh, farad rating that will filter out the frequency which you want to test for distortion, you can use any frequency. You can even play music. So you can play music through this and listen to the speaker for the distortion sound. For anyone that missed that, very simple clipping detector, amplifier, small speaker, capacitor in series, non-polarized, high enough voltage to support your amplifier's power. So you need to work that out. Very, very small farad rating, 3.3 microfarads or 2.2 microfarads in series with your speaker. It's driving now a load, so we have our dummy loads plugged in. So it's driving a speaker. We're playing 33 hertz through the amplifier. I'm actually gonna change the, the frequency so we can see that it works at different frequencies. Let's change it to a higher frequency. Let's go up to, I don't know, 
45 point something, 45 hertz. So let's have a look at 45 hertz. Okay, so 45 hertz. Let's turn the, the volume up until we hit clip point. So again, the amplifier is driving a load through our dummy loads. We have this small speaker hooked up as well to the amplifier speaker outputs with a small capacitor in series to filter out the low frequencies because clipping emits high frequencies. So to detect clipping, we turn the amplifier up to clip point. And you can hear that the clipping distortion sound comes through the small speaker. So rather than looking at an LED on an SMD distortion detector DD1, you can just take your small spare speaker, everyone has small spare speakers laying around, and you can hook it up with a capacitor in series, and you can hear the distortion. So yeah, there we go, there it is, really fucking easy.